So this topic is uh, really heavy. We'll be talking about the new fusion after failed infected TKA. Uh, <clears throat> so I tried to squeeze in the uh, key images in this talk, but we uh, recently published a GBGS article about that, uh, reviewing the um, uh, current concepts of uh, neon producers after failed TKA that was published last year. So the objectives of this talk are to review the indications, alternatives, the optimal knee fusion time after failed TKA, contraindications, principles, and the methods of uh, arthrodesis. Now the indications when the knee reconstruction is not an option. So uh, uh, you are looking at patients with recurrent PGIs, loss of extensor mechanism, large bone defects. Uh, painful knee after TKA is quite rare, but it can happen. Uh, or patients with poor soft tissue coverage. The alternative to knee fusion, um, resection arthroplasty is reserved for really a um, uh, sub small subset of patients with uh, um, advanced disease and comorbidities and not really good candidates for major operations. Uh, suppressive antibiotics, we know that 60% of patients, they won't actually tolerate the uh, uh, antibiotics. Transfemoral amputation, again, the traditional amputation, not the um, osteointegration uh, one. And Dr. Tisworth will talk, at, you, you have a talk about that, so he will talk about, about that and how that uh, could change actually the management of infected TKAs in the future. So uh, the literature is very clear, which is better, knee fusion versus uh, transfemoral amputation. Uh, many studies actually uh, showed that superior outcomes in terms of functional uh, results uh, comes with knee fusion. Uh, this is another paper comes uh, came in from Rothman Institute. Uh, also uh, showed that the uh, uh, better function for fusion. The key message you want to remember from all these papers that the traditional um, traditional um, amputation would leave patients uh, uh, fifty percent of patients without the ability uh, to walk. So now the question comes is, when, when should you decide to, to, uh, uh, to fuse the knee after failed infected TKA? Now if you take a closer look about the uh, uh, like two-stage revisions, uh, in one large cohort of patients, they found that 40% of their patients actually, they never underwent the uh, first stage of, the second stage of re-implantation. So they, they, they did the explantation, they put the antibiotic space around 40%, within one year they never had the uh, uh, second stage of reimplantation. Now again, there is uh, a lot of talk in the literature about how successful the two-stage revision after knee arthroplasty. Um, uh, in another study from Rothman Institute, 20% of patients, they actually never underwent the second stage. So they had basically like a resection arthroplasty. Again, this is a good review also from uh, HSS here about the poor prognosis. So these patients, they don't truly really do well. Then the question comes, should you fuse the knee or should you repeat a two-stage revision? And that's a very uh, controversial question in the literature. The problem is that most surgeons and uh, patients, the pre they perceive the knee fusion as a poor outcome procedure and they delay it until that you get um, a substantial bone loss and uh, due to multiple revisions in the knee. So you don't want to do a knee fusion in somebody who had a contralateral uh, knee arthrodesis because the daily activities will not be uh, possible or somebody who had transfemoral amputation uh, uh, on the epsilat on the contralateral side or somebody who had an epsilateral hip arthrodesis. The principles, you want to optimize the host, uh, you want to make sure that patients with diabetes, nutrition, uh, uh, malnutrition, they get really optimized for that. Um, uh, carefully evaluate the surgical scars, get the plastic surgery on board uh, um, early on. The optimal alignment has been cited as flexion of 10 degrees to 15 degrees and valgus of 5 to 7 degrees. Now in, in the real world, if you are using an IM nail, this is, could not be really actually a possibility, but there are some tricks to go around that. Maximum bone contact, so you want to you explant the knee, you want to uh, uh, shorten the bone. The problem is that if the patient had a large bone defect, the primary closure won't, won't be a possibility. You can kink the vessels. If you have 10 centimeter or 15 centimeter of large defect, you want to shorten it. You can't actually close the skin. Um, leg length discrepancy, um, the, the, you know, the, the, they cited the 1.5 to 2 centimeter of uh, leg length discrepancy uh, as a favorable on these patients on the epsilateral side. 
Uh, but the range anyway, once you take the uh, implants out, uh, can go to up to six centimeter anyway. Can you do a single stage uh, versus two stage knee fusion? Um, now again, in this article we published last year at the GBGS, we uh, uh, talked about the emerging role of antibiotic uh, roads, uh, which can uh, show actually patients, you could do the knee fusion in single stage. So if you know the organism, you know you have a good host, you could just put an antibiotic nail to achieve fusion. Uh, this is a, a, a study that uh, we are working on. Uh, we are actually submitting this study very soon. Uh, we reviewed the, um, uh, uh, the number of patients that had uh, antibiotic nails. Uh, 29 patients, but we had about 14 patients who had knee fusion after infected uh, uh, TKAs. And the infection control is, is very reasonable, 89%. If you review the literature, it goes like from... 70% to 100%. So again, it, dep it depends how, do you, how would you define uh, the infection control. Method of arthrodesis, since Dr. Rosberg just came in, we'll uh, quote his uh, uh, paper here, and he said that a single solution for all problems uh, does not exist. Uh, you have to be careful and creative when, you, when it comes to uh, achieving a knee fusion. So uh, in our article at the GBJS, we uh, uh, um, describe four uh, strategies. Now, each one of these has um, uh, indications. Now, all the cases uh, in this presentation were uh, patients from the HSS, either uh, were Dr. Rosberg or uh, Fragment patients. Uh, so the first strategy is uh, antibiotic uh, coated IM nail. So this patient had a, a LLD of 2.5 centimeter, infected TKA. You already could see he's in his spacer now. Uh, so you could accept the LLD is not too bad. There is no wound uh, coverage. Uh, acute shortening is possible. That would not compromise the soft tissue, uh, and you could achieve that uh, with the IM nail. Again, it's an antibiotic uh, IM nail. Second strategy, you do accept, you put a frame uh, plus minus lengthening. So in this patient had an LLD of seven centimeter. You could not accept that. Had some wound coverage issues. So you could um, actually use a double frame to. Uh, achieve fusion and then you simultaneously uh, lengthen him uh, above that. Um, again, this is, another, uh, this is another patient with the same strategy. Uh, this patient uh, had a unilateral, uh, uh, had an ipsilateral uh, THA uh, and therefore a frame was a good um, option for him. Uh, you can always do a prophylactic uh, secondary stabilization whether with a nail or a, uh, or a plate. In this case, a plate was uh, uh, reasonable. The third strategy, uh, gradual shortening with an external fixation, and then uh, you put an antibiotic IM nail. So this patient is elderly patient, had a large bone defect, but you could accept the LLD in him. He's not a candidate for lengthening. And acute shortening was not a possibility. So even if you want to put a nail right away, uh, the soft tissue, soft tissue closure won't be uh, uh, possible. So one strategy here uh, to use a frame, um, achieve the fusion, and once you uh, get closure, and maximum bone contact, you convert that to an antibiotic uh, uh, IM nail. This is the fourth strategy, and I find, I find this really uh, uh, interesting, and Dr. Uh, uh, Rosberg actually came up with this idea. It's, it's really fantastic. So these patients are really um, uh, elderly patients. They have a massive bone defects. Uh, achieving a maximum bone contact won't be a possibility. These patients are elderly, above 80 years of old. So what you could use, uh, you could put an IM nail, uh, put it in the cannulated cylindrical cement spacer, and it's all antibiotic loaded, including the IM nail as well. And these patients will be allowed to uh, weight bear uh, postoperatively as well. Uh, <clears throat> again, that's reserved for a small subset of, uh, of patients. We did a systematic review about the uh, um, outcomes here. Uh, in two lines, um, the uh, IM nail, uh, achieve higher fusion rates and of course you can get uh, lower fusion rates if uh, if you explant hinge knees or distal femurs versus a standard TKA makes sense. In conclusion the uh, solid knee fusion after uh, infected TKA is uh, provide <coughs> stable extremity. Knee arthrodesis should be actually attempted after one two-stage revision in my opinion Again, it, there are many um, uh, factors contribute to that, the host, the organism, and um, uh, the surgical technique. Uh, there is no one solution. Again, you could just, you have to be a creative, uh, select the best strategy for the, uh, for the best patient. 
Uh, one more thing is that uh, uh, I think the use of inter SU integration might change this discussion in a few years. Uh, if you have a patient who had a two-stage revision, uh, would you give him a knee fusion versus SU integration? That's a, a new topic, actually, uh, Dr. Rosbrook and Tistworth will talk about. Thank you.